What I'm wearing is not my skin, but a fox skin. I'm not living my life, but my in life. Skin is easy to borrow, life is hard to repay. The principles of heaven, destiny, and law cannot accommodate me. And I just want to survive. Chapter 1 Ghost Peeling You are listening at NovelFull.audio On the ninth day of the tenth month in the lunar calendar, it is advisable to bury oneself, avoid all inappropriate things, and avoid all ghosts. I was born on this day. When I was born, I encountered a ghost peeling. The whole body was covered in blood and not even a single piece of skin, which scared the midwife unconscious. My parents are so scared that they don't know what to do. My grandfather wrapped me in clothes and carried me home. When my parents rushed home, they found out that my master had nailed the door and window with wooden boards. My father had been shouting outside for a long time, and then my master replied, if I don't come out, no one should come in. You guard the door for me, who dares to come in? I'll chop him alive. After my grandfather finished shouting, he stopped talking and the room became quiet. My dad just guarded the room and didn't dare to move a step. I don't know who spread the news about my lack of human skin to the village, and now the village is boiling up. Every day, people run outside my yard to watch the excitement. Why I was born without human skin is becoming increasingly outrageous. Someone said. The grandson of the Chen family has no human skin. It was my grandfather who skinned a white fox alive when he was young and came to seek revenge. Our old Chen family has been a leather craftsman for three generations, and the skill of peeling is unparalleled. Back then, someone went to old Chen's house to buy leather and saw with their own eyes a dog-like creature running out of my yard, covered in blood. When he looked into the yard again, he saw a white fox lying on the skinning case. The fox squinted its eyes, curled up its tail as if asleep, motionless. The person thought the fox looked good, and when he touched it, the fox's body immediately shrunk. Originally, that was a complete fox skin. My grandfather gave the person a big slap on the spot and closed the door with fox skin in his arms. After that day, my family was causing trouble. During the day, I could always see a skinless fox screaming in front and behind my house. At night, you can see a woman covered in blood crying at my doorstep. This matter lasted for seven days before the fox died at my doorstep. The day the fox died happened to be the ninth day of October, and I was also born on the ninth day of October. This is not the fox who came knocking on it back then, so what is it? My dad also felt at a loss when he heard these words. He knew that my master had worked as a cobbler, and he also knew that my master suddenly sealed off the skinning knife, swearing not to engage in the business of skinning in his lifetime but he didn't know why my master did this. Now think about it, maybe it's really related to that white fox. At that time, even my mom advised my dad. Either don't wait, a child without skin will definitely not survive, so don't mess around with our dad. Besides, our dad has been carrying the child inside for three days now, and the child hasn't even taken a sip of milk. Can he still live? At first, my dad didn't listen to advice. There were too many people talking, and he didn't have any confidence in his heart. After hesitating for a while, my dad dared to knock on my grandfather's window. He knocked for a long time without seeing any movement in the room, and his heart was also flustered. He didn't pay attention to what my grandfather had instructed him at the time. He drew a pickaxe from the warehouse and was about to smash the door. Before he ran to the door, my grandfather pushed the door open and walked out. At that time, my grandfather was walking unsteadily, supporting the wall and saying, the child is temporarily saved. When my father heard that the child had been saved, he didn't even bother to tell my grandfather anything else. He would often rush inside when he pushed the door. But when he saw me, he was scared and sat down on the ground. At that time, I was wrapped in a white fox skin, with only one face exposed outside. The white fox fur, with a bloody face, made anyone feel scared. 
It took my dad a while to recover and drive out those who wanted to watch the excitement outside. He then helped my grandfather into the house and asked cautiously, Dad, you've really skinned a white fox before. That's when it begged me to peel off its skin. My grandfather admitted in one breath. My father suddenly felt confused and said, Dad, if a fox can come and find someone, it will become a climate change. How could she still let you skin her? My master said, that fox didn't say why. I feel like she couldn't transform, so I asked her to peel off her skin and try to transform. At that time, I was also afraid that she would cause trouble for our family again. I made her swear not to touch our Chin family and had to mortgage her skin on me, so I took action. My dad said, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the fox that caused trouble in our family. Dad, can you find that fox? Why don't you go beg her to save our child? My grandfather said, I'll go find her. He was about to pack his things and go out. After some persuasion, my dad allowed my grandfather to rest all night. When he woke up the next day, he didn't know where he was going. There is a legend about the stone fox temple in my home. It is said that there is a large temple hidden in the mountains that ordinary people cannot see. That temple is the mountain gate of the stone fox goddess. The stone fox goddess is not easily allowed to have people kowtow to her in the temple, and those who have no chance with her cannot find the stone fox temple, a destined person enters the temple, and the stone fox goddess always responds to her requests. My grandfather went to that stone fox temple. After my grandfather hesitated for a while before lighting three sticks of incense, he respectfully kowtowed to Lady Shirhu and said, Lady Shirhu, I am the cobbler Chen He from the foot of the mountain. I came to ask you something. The stone fox statue with a human body and a fox head, although motionless, seemed to be staring at my master from a high position. My grandfather also felt that someone was standing at a high place watching his spine, and couldn't help but lift his head. When he saw the stone statue, a bright red blood mark had already appeared on the throat of the stone fox. My master immediately froze there, watching the bloody crimson spread across the stone fox. In no time, the stone fox became covered in blood, as if it had been skinned by someone. My grandfather's heart was half cold at that time. The blood stain on the neck of the stone fox was the same location as when he peeled off the skin and put on the knife. The immortal family in the mountains is good at seeing people and repaying kindness. Evil in appearance is revenge. Sure who clearly told my master that he has a grudge against him. My master is in a hurry. Back then, it was clear that the other party begged my grandfather to peel its skin, but now they haven't been able to transform successfully and come knocking on it, but we can't rely on my grandfather. So my master, in a fit of rage, couldn't control whether the other party was from an immortal family, and pointed at Sherhu and cursed loudly. At first, Sherhu just stared at my master coldly with her eyes that were not covered by blood. Not long after, there was a sound of crying and laughing like a demon coming from the Sherhu temple. The sound was exactly the same as that of the skinny fox crying at the door. Not only does it sound intimidating, but it can also make people daydream. Later on, my grandfather stopped scolding and his mind was filled with thoughts about what I could do in the future. Is it growing together with that fox skin and becoming a human fox? Or will I live my whole life red and unable to see anyone? Perhaps in the end, I will become a demon named, Bloody Fury, who specializes in seeking revenge from a cobbler and will skin our entire family in the middle of the night. My grandfather became more and more scared as he thought, and his legs collapsed and he sat on the ground. Chapter 2 Worshipping Ancestors Again You are listening at NovelFull.audio After a long time, my master finally regained his composure and pointed at Shir who, cursing loudly, Why are you bullying people like this? Just because you are an immortal family. You wait for me, our old Chen family is not easy to deal with either. My master dropped a harsh sentence and stumbled towards the outside of the temple. If someone else was still in the temple at that time, I must have asked my master. What can you do as a cobbler? 
My Lord dares to go to the Shirhu temple because Shirhu once swore that he would not harm my Lord. Shirhu, when he is unreasonable, the Chen family can only watch him act recklessly and obediently accept his fate. My grandfather returned home and the first thing he did was to give half of the family property to my father, let him take my mother and go far away. From then on, he remained anonymous and had no contact with our grandfather and grandson. My dad certainly wouldn't agree, but my grandfather said he wants to take me to the brink of death. The people of the Chen family cannot all die together. In the end, my dad was forced to leave and had to take my mom away from home. My grandfather waited for them to leave before carrying me into the ancestral house, locking the door, and moving out the ancestral tablet. There are 360 lines in the world, and every line has its ancestor. Craftsmen who have not worshipped their ancestors cannot inherit ancient methods and become true masters. Our old Qin family is a master craftsman who has worshipped the master craftsman of the Shang dynasty, known as the Prime Minister by Gan. The old Qin family has only been able to hold the first position in the field of leather craftsmanship for several generations. My grandfather took out the plaque and looked at it for a long time. He gritted his teeth and inserted the plaque upside down into the base. He then picked up a peeling knife and cut off his left index finger with one blow. He held up his bloody finger and kowtowed to the plaque, saying, My unfilial disciple Chen He, who has suffered a great disaster, has no choice but to pay homage to his ancestors. I don't blame any calamity or hate any calamity. After my grandfather knocked several heads in a row, a string of flames suddenly burst out from under the ancestral tablet, and in an instant, flames over a foot high erupted from the tablet. My grandfather knelt straight in front of the plaque until the flames extinguished before lifting his head. The ancestral tablet was destroyed, but charcoal with sparks stood on the altar. My grandfather's tears streamed down on the spot. He cried and kowtowed to the charcoal, his head shattered, but he still refused to stop. Grandmaster, my Chen family has been worshipping Grandmaster for generations. Now there is only such a unique family. I beg Grandmaster for mercy, please do so. A cobbler actually has two ancestors, one righteous and one evil. The ancestor of the Chen family once taught. Do not worship the ancestors of evil sections. Now, the skills left by Bai Gan can only temporarily protect me from death but cannot save my life. My master can only worship the founder of the evil sect and fight for my life. My grandfather inserted the ancestral tablet upside down, which means he wants to pursue his own sect and submit to another ancestral tablet. As a result, the ancestor did not manifest. This is because the evil ancestor refused to accept my master. My master understands in his heart that if a stone fox can skin a descendant of the Chin family, it can skin another one. What if my parents hide their names? They cannot sever ties with the Chin family, and sooner or later, sure who will have to find them. He can't save me, the Chin family's incense is really about to end. My grandfather didn't know how many heads he knocked, until he knocked the ground to the point where it was covered in blood, and then he couldn't resist fainting. After my grandfather woke up, he carried me up the mountain and stayed there for seven days. In those days, people who had seen my master said he was crazy, and he didn't know what method he had used to lure all the foxes in the mountains. As long as he caught those foxes, they would be skinned alive. The fox skin covered a tree, and the dead fox was thrown directly into the mountain stream, staining the water red. At first, the villagers wanted to persuade my master, but when they saw him killing foxes like crazy, no one dared to make do with it. Those days, besides knowing that my master was peeling a fox, no one in the village knew what else he had done. But after my grandfather took me down the mountain, my skin slowly grew on me. I don't know why, my skin is even whiter than a girl's, but it's abnormally white and doesn't look fresh at all. The villagers all say that the skin on my body is not mine at all, it was my grandfather who covered me with a dead skin. My grandfather always tells me to take an umbrella when going out and not let the sun shine. I once forgot to bring an umbrella when I went out, but I haven't gone far yet. 
My exposed skin feels like it's been burned by fire, and it has been red and swollen for several days. After that, I never dare not take an umbrella when I go out again. It was only after that time that I believed the words of the villagers and tentatively asked my master, am I wearing dead skin? My grandfather told me that when he defected to his ancestral master, the evil ancestor didn't know why he wouldn't accept him, but after my grandfather fainted, he told him that I still had salvation. But if he wants to save me, he has to gamble his life at least twice. My grandfather followed the method taught by his grandfather and killed over a hundred foxes. He soaked the fox skin left by the stone fox with the blood of the fox's heart and peeled off the innermost layer of the fox skin, sticking it on me. I'm not a top leather craftsman, I can't peel off that layer of film at all. If I break it with just one blow, I won't be able to save it anymore. In addition, my grandfather is missing a finger. To completely peel off the skin, it depends not only on the craftsmanship, but also on luck. That's the first time I gambled my life. The second time I gambled my life was on my twelfth birthday. The human skin that I was stripped off by the stone fox must still be in its hands. On my twelfth birthday, it will come to see me again. At that time, if my grandfather could talk to it and exchange my human skin, the fate of my life would be considered over. However, my master is just a cobbler and not a match for the stone fox. At most, relying on the oath of the stone fox back then, there is a chance to have a conversation with it. If Sher who were to be ruthless and try to kill me on the spot, my lord wouldn't be able to stop him. So, this second gamble is even more dangerous. If the stone fox refuses to exchange my skin back, it will have to come back when I am sixteen years old. Because it didn't skin me again when I was sixteen years old, and that fox skin grew on me. That's equivalent to me swapping skin with it, reporting back and forth, and even if we understand the cause and effect between us. With the personality of a stone fox, he wouldn't let me go so easily. My master will have to take me to gamble my life again. However, Grandmaster did not say how to gamble in the third round. He just said. If your grandfather and grandson can't even avoid the second calamity, it's useless to tell you about the rest. After listening, I couldn't help but say, are our ancestors afraid of that fox? My grandfather was so scared that he almost covered my mouth and said, I dare not speak nonsense. Be careful not to blame my ancestor. I didn't say anything, but I just felt in my heart that my ancestor must be afraid of that fox. If he can fight that fox, why hasn't he shown up all along? My grandfather, however, firmly believed in my grandfather's words. When he said these words to me, it was not many days before my twelfth birthday. I waited anxiously until my birthday, and my grandfather specially made a table of dishes and even drank two glasses of wine for me. That day, my master deliberately changed the direction of my bed and lit a piece of white wax on the head of the bed before letting me sleep. In theory, I knew the fox was coming, how could I still sleep? But in no time, I fell asleep in a daze. Chapter 3 Human Skin Entanglement You are listening at NovelFull.audio When I slept until midnight, I suddenly felt someone touching my feet. When I opened my eyes, I saw a woman dressed in bright red sitting on the railing at the end of the bed, bending over to touch something. I was so scared that I almost shouted out loud. I grabbed the blanket tightly with both hands and wanted to hide under it, but I pulled the blanket up and threw it out, exposing both feet. The woman also stepped on the edge of the bed and looked up at my face. The hair that was originally covering her face suddenly split to both sides, revealing a bloody face. That woman has no skin. Her two eyeballs were like glass balls thrown into their sockets, swaying back and forth. I was so scared that I couldn't even shout out. It was like a nightmare, unable to move. I just watched the woman helplessly and climbed onto my bed, face to face with me. The woman's gaze kept turning on my face, as if she was looking at something that originally belonged to her, and as if she was considering something. The woman looked at me for a while, then suddenly reached out to hold my face and kissed my lips. 
I just felt a cold liquid with a bloody smell rush into my mouth and fill my throat. I feel nauseous, unable to spit it out, and my whole body is frozen to the point of shivering. The woman jumped off the bed, bent down, picked up something on the ground, and stood by the bed carrying it. I instinctively turned my head and saw the woman holding something the size of me, like a doll. The other person seemed to know that I was looking at her, so I slowly turned around and lifted the things in my hand in mid-air. It was clearly a human skin stuffed with grass. Although the seven orifices of the skin were covered with withered grass, I could see that the facial features of the skin were almost identical to mine. The woman smiled at me, grabbed my hand, bit through my fingertips, and pressed it against the center of her skin's eyebrows. My fingers hadn't even touched the skin when I heard my grandfather shout, Stop. That woman didn't even glance at my grandfather and sneered as she pressed my finger against the skin. At that time, my whole body trembled from the cold of that mouthful of blood, and I couldn't care what that woman had done to me. The woman turned around carrying the human skin and walked out. My grandfather wanted to stop her, but she casually pushed her aside. When my grandfather got up, the woman had already pushed open the door and left. My grandfather chased after me with all his might, and it took him a long night to return home. He didn't even bother to say a word to me, so he ran into the ancestral house to offer incense to his grandfather. It took him a long time before he walked out in a daze. I cautiously asked, Grandpa, what's wrong with you? My grandfather couldn't hold his tension anymore, holding me and crying uncontrollably. I don't know if it was because I was scared too hard just now, or because I was infected by my grandfather's emotions and started crying with him. Our grandfather and grandson hugged each other and cried bitterly for a while before my grandfather slowly calmed down. When I asked my master again, he said incoherently, Don't be afraid, child. There's a master here, there's a master. Master, as long as there's still one breath left, you can't let that fox hurt you. After talking for a while, my master finally clarified his thoughts and gritted his teeth, saying to me, That fox is too cruel. She stained your skin with your blood, and from now on, human skin will haunt you like a ghost. If you want your skin, it also wants its body. The stone fox is trying to slowly kill you. Even if you don't let the human skin scare you to death, it will still have to trap you everywhere, and if it doesn't work out, it will have to push you towards death at any time. After listening to my grandfather finish speaking, my scalp felt a tingling sensation. Although there were only our grandfather and grandson in the room, I felt a pair of eyes staring at me from behind. I tentatively turned my head, but could only see the empty courtyard through the window. When I turned my head back, I still felt someone staring at me and not letting go. My master looked at me and turned my head around. He immediately pulled out his knife and said, Child, did you see something? I shook my head in a trembling voice and said, No. I feel like there's someone, but I can't see anything. My grandfather ran over and closed the curtains, saying, Child, listen to me. Just now, I didn't catch up with that woman, so I went to ask my grandfather to save your life. Grandmaster told me that you have been entangled by that fox, we need to find a way to save ourselves. Are you the grandmaster again? I don't know why, I always feel that my grandfather's grandfather is not very reliable. My grandfather didn't know what I was thinking, so he continued on his own. Grandmaster said, if you want to get rid of the stone fox, you need to take back your own skin, replace its skin, and if you want to suppress your own skin, you need to find a way in the five elements. Human skin is afraid of gold and fire. Where there is fire and gold, we cannot go. We need to find a way to guide it to places with wood, soil, and water. Only then can we grasp that skin. Let's catch the human skin, and Grandmaster will have a way to exchange your skin. You have a good rest tonight. As soon as it's light, I'll go shopping. Tomorrow night, we'll be scratching people's skin. My grandfather asked me to rest well, but I had a nightmare all night. After a while, I dreamed that the woman with blood all over her body was waving at me with a piece of human skin wearing my clothes, 
but filled with hay inside, urging me to hurry over. After a while, I dreamt of that human skin standing in front of me, talking to me with its mouth open and closed. But I can only see his mouth moving, but I don't know what he's saying to me. After a while, I dreamt that the plaque of the ancestor my grandfather worshipped was swinging back and forth on the altar, and behind the plaque was like a dark person sitting staring at me. I can't see what he looks like, but I see a pair of cold, snake-like eyes on his face. I felt a chill on my body as soon as I saw that person's gaze. I woke up four or five times in a night from being scared. I just slept and tossed around for a long time, and only slept for a while before dawn. When I woke up, my grandfather had already gone out. I was eating the breakfast my grandfather left for me while thinking about the past few days. My master said he wants to protect me, but he's already so old that his skills can't keep up, and he's a bit honest. Apart from being able to pass on some words from our ancestor, we also lack the ability to subdue demons and catch ghosts. We can only gamble our lives according to our ancestors' words. I am also afraid of that person's skin from the bottom of my heart. Go and ask the ghost to save me. Let's not say that the ghost is not related to me. Why do you help me? It's a question whether I dare to speak to the ghost standing in front of me. If you really want me to deal with those things, I'm afraid I can't handle them myself. But. People often become more and more afraid of something. Chapter 4 Shouting the Well You are listening at NovelFull.audio Finally, towards evening, my grandfather returned. As soon as he came in, he dragged me into the ancestral house, inserted the door, and said to me, Xiaojiu, you should go to the tomb well in the back mountain tonight and lift the stone slabs on the well. As soon as I heard this, I was foolish and said, Sir, you're not wrong, are you? I have heard of the tomb well, which is a well buried with dead people, located in the wasteland to the east of our village. Many years ago, there was a beautiful woman in the village who was falsely accused of being a promiscuous scoundrel. She recruited men from her home every day, but after being unable to explain it, she became a fierce-willed woman. In order to prove her innocence, she went to the well in a fit of anger. The villagers were immediately frightened, and no one dared to step forward. Later, this matter was overturned. Someone planned to bring her up and bury her properly, but the iron hook that was lowered couldn't touch the body. At that time, the people present said that the corpse in the well was disrespectful of everyone's dirty behavior and was deliberately hiding from the hook, trying to get the corpse out, unless someone was sent down again to tie a rope to the corpse. There are no people in the village who dare to go down the well, so they can only seek help from Mr. Baishir. After seeing it, the gentleman said, this corpse has too much resentment. Even if you don't go out of the well, you can kill. If you go out of the well, it's even worse. You need to quickly use a white stone to suppress it. The villagers listened to Mr. Byshire's words and covered the well with bluestone slabs, directly laying a grave on top of the well cover. That place was renamed, Fenjingzi. My lord is asking me to dig a ghost grave. My grandfather saw that I was afraid, so he quickly comforted me and said, don't be afraid. With the protection of my grandfather, nothing can happen. If a fierce ghost comes out of the coffin, it's either to repay her kindness or to demand her life. If you help her once, she will accept your kindness once. I can save your life at a critical moment. As he spoke, my master took out several stones tied with red ropes from his pocket and handed them to me. Before you lift the manhole cover, tie these six stones around your ankles. If there is a pressure stone falling, the woman in the well won't be able to pull you. When she can't do anything about you, tie a red rope to her hand and pull her out. My grandfather added, Grandmaster said, the fox will definitely find a way to stop you. But now, it won't move you, it can only deceive you. Don't believe what it says, do whatever you need to do. Do you understand? I understood what I heard, but if I were to do it, I still felt scared. My grandfather saw that I was afraid and reached out to touch my head. Don't be afraid, I'll accompany you, 
he said my master packed up his things and led me out the door. Before we could reach the village entrance, we were stopped by the villagers. The leader spoke up and said, Old Chen, I know you want to save your grandson. But you can't harm our village. Someone said, Old Chen, what do you mean by digging up the grave well? Are you trying to salvage the dead to replace the skin of your grandson? Child, you go home first. My grandfather quietly pushed me before saying, I can do whatever I like, it's none of your business. A group of people started arguing in a few words, and I knew that my grandfather just pushed me, asking me to go and shout for the well myself. I quietly leaned against the courtyard wall of the family by the roadside and circled outside the village, then ran towards the wasteland. In no time, I saw the tomb dug up by my grandfather. The tomb, originally standing in the wasteland, was torn in half by someone from the middle, and the blue stone slab covering the wellhead was also lifted to one side. The edge of the well, which was over a meter high, was exposed between two piles of soil, flipping water vapor outward. My master told me to pull open the stone slab for the well by myself. But because I was too nervous, I didn't pay attention to pondering why the blue stone slab on the wellhead had already disappeared before I arrived. I followed my master's instructions and hurriedly tied the pressure stone around my ankle. With both hands pressing against the edge of the well, I leaned forward and looked into the well. Zimu. Zimu. I just shouted at the wellhead, but countless echoes echoed from the well. The sound sounded like someone shouting Zimu's name from the wellhead all the way down to the bottom of the well. I shouted once, but I didn't dare to shout anymore. I found myself unconsciously leaning forward half of my body, my head already lowered into the well. I quickly withdrew my body, only to hear my master say behind my back, Don't be afraid, keep shouting. Sir. I turned around and glanced back, only to see a fox tail trailing beside my master's cotton shoes. My head suddenly hummed. Is it my grandfather standing behind me, or is it a fox wearing cotton shoes? But if it's a fox, shouldn't it stop me from saving the water ghost? How could you help me and make me shout? I want to take another look back, but I dare not turn back hard. I can only quietly move my body back with my hand against the edge of the well. My grandfather's voice came from behind again. Keep shouting, hurry up. If you don't shout out the people in the well, no one can save you. My heart suddenly trembled, and I didn't have time to think much. I took a flashlight and knocked on the edge of the well before continuing to shout my name. But after a while of delay, the well water had already risen to a level almost aligned with the edge of the well. The rippling well water was less than a foot away from me, and the cold air surging out of the water made my hands ache. I'm really scared now. I pushed the edge of the well with my hand and wanted to stand up. Who knew, before I could stand up, the well suddenly reached out and grabbed my wrist, pulling me and wanting to drag me into the well. I was lying on the edge of the well shouting for someone, but my hand was grabbed by someone and I couldn't put any effort into it. I could only watch as my hands pulled me into the water. The other party only took a few seconds to pull my hands into the water. I was startled by the water and shivered all over, unable to exert any strength. I was immediately dragged into the wellhead by the other party. Just when I thought I was going to be dragged into the well, my feet seemed to be grabbed by someone, dragging me to the spot. That's right, my grandfather made the pressure stone tied to my feet work. I couldn't fall into the well with a stone falling, but I couldn't use any force either. I was pulled and hung on the edge of the well by the forces on both sides. In just a short while, I felt a tearing pain in my hands, and the skin on my hands was being pulled down like a condom. Soon, the excruciating pain spread from my hands to my body, and I felt like the skin on my body was being stretched down. Someone in the well wants to skin me. This thought flashed through my mind, and my heart suddenly became half cold. My master told me that when skinning a living creature, it's best to first use cold water to stimulate him, and wait for his blood to subside before cutting. No wonder when I came over, the stone pressing against the wellhead had already been pushed away by someone. 
There was something hiding in the well in advance, ready to peel my skin. My master didn't come over, my hand was being pulled by the other party, and there was a fox watching behind me. Besides waiting to die, do I have any way to go? Just as I was closing my eyes and waiting to die, it seemed like someone had swam up from the well. The other person rushed towards the dark figure, and the figure hiding in the well suddenly released my hand. Finally, when no one was pulling me, the pressure stone came into play and dragged me back to the ground. I was panting heavily while looking into the well. Suddenly, white droplets of water were popping up into the sky one after another, indicating that someone must have started fighting underwater. Looking at my fox, I don't know where it has gone. I didn't bother to see who would win or lose, so I ran away to my house and locked the door before finally feeling relieved. And just as I arrived home, the sound of my childhood white fox came from outside the door. A sharp and mournful voice came, as if I was about to rush into the house and peel off my skin in the next second. I was so scared that I couldn't catch my breath, and my eyes suddenly turned black and I fainted. Chapter 5 the Unfavorable Fate You are listening at NovelFull.audio When I woke up again, it was already dawn and I sat in bed feeling scared. Last night, not only did I not tie down that female ghost, but I was also almost dragged into the well and skinned. Are these things arranged by our grandfather reliable or not? To be honest, I have no faith in the things arranged by my grandfather. The only one I can trust and rely on is my grandfather. When my master comes back, I need to talk to him well and not listen to everything from my master. Perhaps the grandmaster had no way to deal with the fox, so he asked me to find the female ghost. While I was lost in thought, I suddenly heard someone knocking on the door outside. I thought it was my grandfather who came back, so I quickly went to open the door. As soon as I opened the door, the village chief grabbed me and ran out, saying, Xiao Jiu, come with me quickly, your master has an accident. Ah! When I heard that my grandfather had an accident, it was like hearing a bolt from the blue, causing my mind to go blank. What's wrong with my grandfather? The village chief said urgently, hurry up. If you don't leave, you won't even see the last side. I just felt a whirl in front of me, almost falling to the ground. When I regained my senses, I went crazy and followed the village chief out. When I ran to the place where I separated from my grandfather last night, it was already filled with people watching the excitement. The villagers saw me coming and automatically gave me away. I just saw my grandfather lying on the ground covered in blood, with no shoes left on his feet and several cuts on his face. If it weren't for his clothes, I wouldn't have recognized him. The village chief tugged at me with one hand and pushed my grandfather with the other. Uncle Chen. Uncle Chen. I brought Xiao Jiu here. If you have anything to say, just tell him. My grandfather reluctantly opened his eyes and struggled to say to me, Go back. Ancestor worship master. Then he opened his eyes wide and let out his breath. My master couldn't trust me, so he refused to close his eyes. I touched him a few times but couldn't close his eyes. The villagers helped me with my grandfather's funeral, and I also inquired about the cause of his death. On the night my grandfather had an accident, the family living in the village heard my grandfather arguing with someone outside and thought it was a conflict among the villagers, so they came out to persuade him. As a result, when he looked outside, he was almost scared out of breath. The person saw a group of foxes wearing human clothes and blocked my master in the road, shouting at him one after another. However, my master seemed to be arguing with a group of foxes, constantly arguing and arguing. That person knows that my master has been fascinated by foxes and has treated them all like adults. How dare ordinary people take the lead in such a situation? The man fell back and tried to run into the house. Unexpectedly, he stumbled on the shovel leaning against the door. As soon as the shovel landed, more than half of the foxes turned to look at the yard. My master suddenly woke up and drew a knife from his body, forming a ball with the fox. My grandfather swung his knife at the fox and shouted, Grandmaster, help me, 
save my grandson. My master is almost eighty years old, and he has lost his skills more than ten years ago. He didn't prepare much for going out this time, and he was not a match for a group of foxes. In no time, he was bitten and his whole body was covered in blood. My grandfather was bitten off his ankle by a fox and sat on the ground, wielding a knife and vigorously scratching his face. People living in the mountains know that even yellow skin and foxes can empty a person's stomach, enter the cavity of the dead, control the dead to go to places with people, and use the dead shell to deceive the living. My master was afraid that the fox would dig out his belly and wear a dead man's shell to deceive me, so he cut open his face. Those foxes didn't dig into my grandfather's cavity, but took away his cotton shoes. Last night, standing behind me was a fox wearing cotton shoes. The villagers all know that my family was entangled by a fox. After a simple funeral for my grandfather, they all left. On the day my grandfather was buried, except for a few relatives who couldn't hide, no one came to deliver the funeral. After seeing off my grandfather, I returned to my ancestral house and offered incense to my master. My master just told me to go back and pay respects to my ancestor, but he didn't have time to tell me how to do it. No one in the village knows how to worship my ancestors, even if someone knows, they won't come knocking at this time and take me to compete with the fox. I can only learn from my grandfather's appearance, count out to my ancestor, and mutter incessantly, Disciple Chin Jio pays respects to my ancestor. This beginner who worships the founder has a complete set of rules, no one can do without one step. My grandfather used to worship his ancestor before, and only then did he worship the evil ancestor without going through the beginner's process. I don't know the rules. Even if I kowtow and die, my grandfather won't come out to take me in. I don't know how many heads I've knocked, or is there no movement on the ancestral tablet. I once again remembered my grandfather telling me that his face was covered in blood when his ancestor worshipped him. This anger in his heart can no longer be suppressed. Standing up and pointing at the plaque, he cursed loudly, What kind of ancestor are you? Our old Chen family respectfully worships you, and it's okay if you don't bless your disciples and grandchildren. Now that your descendants are in great trouble, you can make five out of six and never come out. I worship you, it's better to worship ghosts as ancestors. The more I cursed, the angrier I became. I grabbed the incense burner that was used to incense my ancestor and smashed it into pieces. I threw the ancestral tablet on the ground and kicked it into two pieces. The place where my ancestor was used was also smashed into pieces, until I was exhausted from smashing it, and then I sat down in the ancestral house. Before I could sit for a while, I saw a bloody patch seeping out from under the crack in the door of my ancestral house. I suddenly woke up. The fox came looking for me. My grandfather has left, and my ancestor cannot come out to worship. I have been blocked in the house by a fox. Who else can save me? I hurriedly stood up and searched everywhere for something. Anyway, having something in my hand is better than facing the fox empty-handed. But my ancestral house has already been smashed by me, how can there be anything else that can be used? I finally broke off a table leg and held it in my hand. The front door of my ancestral house had already been pushed open by a seam, and the fox's round eyeball was staring at my face through a crack in the door. The coldness in its eyes made my scalp tingle. I don't know where the courage came from, so I stepped forward and pushed the door open. I arched my body and held the door tightly with both hands, all focused on blocking the fox from outside. Unexpectedly, someone was breaking down the threshold outside. In no time, I heard a clang, which was the sound of someone taking down the threshold and throwing it aside. The threshold is gone, and there must be a gap that is two fingers wide between the door and the ground. Does the fox want to sneak in from under the door? I lowered my head and looked under my feet, only to see a yellowed human skin seeping through the crack in the door. The human skin was spread out with ten fingers flat, like a piece of paper, being pushed in bit by bit from under the crack of the door. As soon as Ren Pai's hands reached into the room, they swelled up as if they had been filled with air. 
Originally a flat and neat piece of leather, in the blink of an eye it became like an inflated plastic glove, with a round ball in the middle and five outstretched fingers in front. Human skin has penetrated. I wanted to let go, but I was afraid that the fox would rush in from outside the door. Just as I didn't know what to do, human skin suddenly grabbed my ankle and flipped me out. Before I could even get up, the front door of my ancestral house was opened wide by the impact. The woman, who had lost her skin, stood at the door with a bloody expression, her eyes fixed coldly on my face. Chapter 6 3 Calculation of Stone Fox You are listening at NovelFull.audio The woman's figure blocked the door, but the light outside cast a fox shadow on the ground. The human skin that lifted me up earlier crouched at the opponent's feet like a dog, shaking its head and scanning me back and forth with its eyes filled with withered grass. The woman stroked her bald head with one hand and turned her gaze, chuckling inwardly, why resist? Isn't it good to be obedient like him? I was forced onto this by the stone fox, and I didn't know what fear was anymore. I gritted my teeth and grabbed the legs of the table on the ground, holding them in my hand. With a pointed tip, I charged towards the stone fox and rushed forward. With just a gentle wave of his hand, Sher Hu lifted me up in mid-air and slammed me heavily into the wall. This time, I fell so hard that I couldn't even stand up. I leaned against the wall and stared at Sher Hu intently, you're bullying people too much. Why are you? After all, it's just a child. Sher Hu shook his head and smiled, I can bully you if I'm stronger than you. Do you still need to ask? Follow me. Sher Hu stood three meters away from me and extended his hand. The other person's bloody palm grew larger and larger in my sight. In just a few seconds, the bloody palm had already blocked my sight. At the moment when the other person's five fingers gathered in the air, I felt as if the whole person was lifted up by it, involuntarily wanting to stand up. This is it. My master has left, and no one can save me anymore. I can't imagine what would happen if I fell into the other person's hands. Just as I was closing my eyes and waiting to die, there were suddenly two explosions when the bowstrings were released from the walls of my ancestral house. Immediately after, two strong winds flew past my ears. Before I could react, the sound of the walls collapsing followed one after another, and the screams of the stone fox rushed towards the distance with the sound of the glass shattering. In an instant, the sound in the room changed four times in a row until I opened my eyes. The first thing I saw was two bloodstained crossbows and arrows, as well as scattered wall coverings on the ground. When I wanted to go up and take a closer look, there was an extra person in the room who looked like a eunuch in a movie. The other person picked up a crossbow and arrow from the ground with their blue fingers raised, sniffed it under their nose, and muttered to themselves, you're still not ruthless enough. If you don't take action later, you'll kill it. I asked nervously, who are you? Our family is the ancestor that you have never looked up to or seen. As the person turned around, I saw the other person's appearance clearly. The other person's emaciated face was adorned with a pair of white eyebrows, with sharp, knife-like edges inserted into their temples. Although their eyes seemed soft, there was a hint of coldness hidden in them, which made people unconsciously turn their heads when they looked at each other. Have I seen this person before? A flash of inspiration flashed in my mind and I trembled as I said, Are you the Grandmaster? By the way, the person chuckled and said, I am your ancestor, Han Zong. I just smashed my grandfather's plaque, and he came out. When I scolded him just now, he heard it very clearly. It's no use arguing anymore, so I simply knelt down and kowtowed to Han Zong. Grandson Chin Jiu, pay respects to our ancestors. Han Zong Pu chuckled and said, Little brat, you're a bit quick witted. I knew your ancestors were eating this. Actually, I can't blame you for this. Our family really doesn't have the ability to fight foxes. I instinctively glanced outside, and besides the shattered glass on the ground, there was also a string of blood stains in the outer room. It seemed that Han Zong's crossbow and arrow had injured Sher Hu, 
but he was unable to leave her behind. Han Zong seemed to understand my thoughts and said, no need to look. That fox was injured quite a bit and won't come to see you for seven days. The two of us have time to talk. Let's sit outside, our ancestors. I handed Han Zong over to the main room, poured him tea, and lit a cigarette. Han Zong was not polite either. He pinched his cigarette and took a puff, saying, this thing still suits my ancestors. Han Zong slowly smoked and said, don't worry about what happened just now. I don't blame you for not liking our family. After all, our family is just an old ghost that has lived for some years, not even ghosts and gods. Who is that fox's opponent? Our family worked as a servant under Emperor Hanwu, skinning people for a lifetime and passing down a set of skinning techniques. That's why we were revered as the evil ancestor by the cobbler. Emperor Hanwu Zhu Yuanzhang was not the first person to strip human skin, but the first to write, stripping, into the code of law. Before him, stripping was not used as a formal punishment, and human skin was not like animal skin. It was very difficult to strip a complete human skin with all five senses and hands and feet. The person who can figure out this craft and be revered as the grandmaster can explain it. Han Zong said, peeling people's skin is not a proper way. After the fall of the Ming dynasty, this skill will no longer be used by anyone. My ancestors have cut off incense, and without a descendant, I cannot become a ghost or god. Naturally, I have no major skills and cannot compete with Wenkuxing. I have never dared to come out and confront that fox head. On. Han Zong even gave me a special glance when he said this, and I finally understood the reason why Han Zong has not taken action. I said seriously, I don't know Baigan, I only know our ancestors. What I'm saying is true. Baigan is indeed the righteous god in heaven, but he is too far away from me to save my life. Although Han Zong is just a ghost and lacks the strength to fight against the stone fox, he is doing his best to help me. The incident of smashing his plaque just now is enough to make me feel ashamed. Han Zong smiled and said, You're a slippery kid, but you flatter me. I love listening to your ancestors. Han Zong changed his tone and said, Do you want to ask why your grandfather didn't ask for a duet and instead wanted to worship my evil ancestor? That's because the immortals in the sky are too far away from the human world. He has never seen a duet in his lifetime, but he has seen me once when he was a child. I estimate that's why he re-worshipped me as his ancestor. Our family has received your master's incense, so we can't help but fight against that fox. Unfortunately, that fox is not only difficult to provoke, but also extremely vigilant. Your master and I have even set three plans to not kill her. Han Zongdao said, the first plan was for your master to use the secret technique left by Baigan to strip hundreds of foxes, in order to provoke Shi Hu and let her fall into my ambush. That time, Shi Hu didn't even glance at us. The second plan was to use your grandfather's life to plan, but as a result, we were only halfway there. I suddenly looked up at Han Zong and said, are you saying that my grandfather died intentionally? Intentionally. That's right. Han Zong nodded and said, what happened at Fenjingzi is just that we are setting up a mystery. The real calculation of the fox's fate is your master's. Back then, when the fox begged your master to skin it, he swore not to touch him or his wife and children. So, your father and mother were safe and sound. But when they arrived at your place, they skinned it. That fox, this was deliberately taking advantage of his oath. Your grandfather is also exploiting the loophole of this oath. When he went out that night, he carried something that could anger the fox. He deliberately let the fox's fox son and grandson bite him to death, just to make the fox's oath come true. Unfortunately. Chapter 73 Calculation of Stone Fox 2 You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Han Zong hasn't said, what a pity, yet. I cried out loud. My lord risked his life just to gamble on a slim hope. That fox is certainly afraid of the calamity brought by the oath, but my lord, 
like Han Zong, is taking advantage of the loophole in the heavenly way. Will the heavenly way allow such a thing to happen? My tears couldn't stop flowing down, and Han Zong stood there quietly watching me. It wasn't until my emotion stabilized that he raised his hand and touched my head, saying, Don't cry, kid. We don't have the strength to fight against others, so we have to gamble our lives to win or lose. We can't just sit idly by. Your master is such a good person. You also need to show your men's courage. Even if we can't win against that fox, we'll have to destroy her hundreds of years of moral conduct. Otherwise, let alone say that your master died in vain, I can't swallow this breath, my ancestor. Child, remember. When you're alive, you can cry. But once you've cried, we have to retrieve the tears that fell. Otherwise, we can't afford to lose face. When I looked up at Han Zong, I suddenly felt that my grandfather had returned. My grandfather and Han Zong's figures seemed to overlap, and I instinctively called out, Grandpa. After a slight pause, Han Zong burst into laughter and said, Damn it, that bastard surnamed Dong. I have a grandson, and our family has been waiting for him for a lifetime. Unexpectedly, it was after I died that I recognized him. Xiaojiu, we acknowledge your master. Even our grandsons died together. Hmm. I knelt down and cowed out to Han Zong, as if I had become his godfather. Han Zong held my hand and asked me to sit side by side with him. Xiaojiu, wow. I just said, unfortunately, which means I set a trap with your master, waiting for the fox to come and find you and then shooting it to death with a hidden crossbow. That fox is very slippery. Although it was trying to catch you, it refused to come in. It was my two crossbows that failed to save her life. Han Zong's voice sank and he said, the fox is too cunning. If you want to catch it, you have to lay out for a long time and gradually lure it to the bait. After the fox is injured this time, it won't give us another chance to lay out calmly. In seven days, she will definitely come back to catch you. We still have two more chances. I looked up and said, Sir, how could there be two chances? What I'm saying is, you have a second chance. Han Zongdao said, that fox was determined to get its fur back. However, it swore to put the fur in your grandfather's hand as collateral. If your grandfather lives, it cannot take the fur. If your grandfather dies, this oath will be broken. Last time it came, it poured a mouthful of fox blood into your mouth. It was for you to keep its skin, so that it could peel it back when your grandfather died. But if this mouthful of fox blood goes down, you will have to keep this skin for at least five years before it can take action. So when she comes back, it's like we missed it. She only knows how to kill me, not you. You still have a second chance to live. I looked at Han Zong in horror and said, Sir, let's not gamble on the second chance, but on this one. Han Zong smiled and said, Don't worry, I don't want to die either. We still need to find the water ghost in the well. Although foxes can float, they can't make any waves in the water. With that water ghost helping you, we can deal with her in the water. You rest for the night, and tomorrow night. I'll take you to see that water ghost. This time, we need to release her. I couldn't help but ask, Sir, what exactly is that water ghost from? I don't know. Han Zong shook his head and said, Originally, the move of Fen Jingzi was just a cover for you to invite the water ghost. Your master and I really intended to let him die at the hands of a fox. At first, I thought that the well was just a woman who threw herself into the well with injustice. It wasn't until I fought her that I realized her cultivation was very terrifying. Moreover, there were more than one restrictions in that well. Han Zongdao said, if she is willing to help you, we have a chance of winning. This time, you have to go down the well and beg that female ghost to take action. I gritted my teeth and said, okay, when are we going? Tomorrow. Han Zong said, you have been guarding your master's spirit for the past few days. You have been tired and injured your body. Now you are going down the well. 
I'm afraid you might die before you see that woman. You should rest well for a night, and we will go there tomorrow night. Han Zong patted me on the forehead as he spoke, and I fell asleep in a daze. When I woke up, it was already the evening of the next day. Han Zong asked me to have a full meal before going out with him. Only when I had eaten enough can I withstand the cold in the well. At that time, how could I still eat something? I had to force myself to stuff the food into my mouth one by one until I couldn't eat it anymore. Then, I picked up the things prepared by Emperor Han and went to the grave. There have been several incidents in the village, and no one dares to touch the well that has been dug up. When I look for it again, the well is still open and exposed in the snow like before. Han Zong glanced into the well and took out a piece of paper filled with words, saying, Light the paper and throw it into the well. If there is any movement in the well, let's go down again. I didn't read what was written on the paper. Just lit the fire, threw the paper into the well, and leaned down on the edge of the well to look down. The red light brought by the flames drifted down the wall of the well before it suddenly went out. There was also a strange cry coming from the well, and the muddy well water rolled up from bottom to top. As I watched the water rushing towards me, Han Zong reached out and grabbed my shoulder, lifting me up. Before my feet could stand firm, a white water column burst out of the well and poured down on my head. In the cold winter of the twelfth lunar month, when cold water dripped on my head, I suddenly felt a surge of excitement. Han Zong sighed and said, Let's go. The one in the well doesn't want to see us. Let's go back and find a way. I trembled and said, No. I, I want to go down and take a look. No way. Han Zong shook his head and said, That piece of paper just now is equivalent to our bowing invitation. We rely on etiquette to seek an audience. If the host doesn't want to see guests, we have to leave. If we force ourselves to break in, we will have to fight back with the host. If we don't handle it properly, we won't be able to get out. I was so cold that my face turned blue, but I stubbornly held on to Han Zong and refused to go back with him. Master, let's go down and take a look. We can't think of any other way to go back. Anyway, we're all dead. Why don't we give it a try? Han Zong hesitated for a while before saying, Take off your clothes, take a few more sips of wine, and I'll take you into the water. I took off my cotton jacket a few times, unscrewed the wine bottle and poured it into my mouth. Han Zong spread out my clothes on the ground, nailed the cuffs and legs with nails, and made a round ball with snow at the collar of my clothes. He pulled out a few of my hair and stuffed it into the snowball. If you don't pay attention to looking up, anyone would think there is a person lying in the snow with limbs stretched out. Han Zongshan took a deep breath and said, I hope this dummy can save your life then. Chapter 8 Xiaojiu, let go. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At that time, I was so cold that I shivered and couldn't speak fluently. Where else is there to ask in detail? Why can putting a few clothes save my life? Han Zong took out a rope and wrapped it around my waist. I'll put you down in a moment. When you get close to the water, you can see the female corpse. Remember, you must go into the water behind the female corpse. You must not face her. If you face her, you're done. After you leaned against the female corpse and fell into the water, your hands reached out from her armpits and hugged her from behind. No matter how hard she struggled, don't let go. Hold on until I pulled you out of the water. If you can retrieve that corpse, we'll win. Otherwise. Forget it, go down when you're ready. As soon as I followed Han Zong's arrangement and grabbed the rope and entered the wellhead, I couldn't help but shiver. Although I didn't want to open my mouth, my upper and lower teeth collided uncontrollably, and my hand holding the rope seemed to lose consciousness, almost unable to grasp it. Han Zong lit a flashlight from the wellhead to illuminate me and kept comforting me, hold on, it's about to touch the water. A few times ago, when I was sticking to the wellhead, the water in the well was rising. This time, I don't know what's going on. The well water has been falling all along, 
and the rope has been running down for a while, so I can't touch the water. If this continues, the rope may not be long enough. Han Zong also shouted from above, can you touch the water? No, come up first. Put it down. I don't have much time left, I can't try again and again to get close to the female corpse in the well. Han Zong lowered the rope twice in a row and said, you're getting close to the water. Don't look down. It was already late when I heard the sound of, don't look down. I had already seen the female corpse floating in the water. The female corpse stood upright in the well, with her face tilted towards the direction of the well. Her hair spread out like black algae, sealing the well tightly. As my gaze fell on the pale face surrounded by black hair, the female corpse suddenly opened its eyes. The other party is clearly not looking at me, but at the rope in my hand. Before I could react, the rope broke into two pieces above my head, and I grabbed half of the rope and fell into the water. The cold and piercing well water almost made me lose consciousness, and I couldn't help but open my mouth. The well water instantly poured into my mouth, and I felt a chill from my heart. My eyes turned black in waves, and my head had lost the ability to think. I just fought my life to scratch in the water according to Han Zong's instructions. The well was not wide at first, and there was only enough space in the well for two people to face each other. I only scratched a few times before touching the arm of the female corpse. I didn't care if I hugged the female corpse from behind, so I reached forward with both hands under the other's armpits and tried my best to hold her in my arms. When I was stuck with the female corpse, my heart suddenly cooled. It was broken, I hugged the female corpse from the front. At this moment, I couldn't even push the female corpse out of my arms in time, so I could only face her ferocious face. I watched as the female corpse opened its lips, which seemed to have been wiped with blood, and I was so scared that I closed my eyes. Unexpectedly, the female corpse spoke up and asked, Do you want to take me out? The consequences of taking me out are probably unbearable for you and the old ghost above. I was so frozen that I couldn't speak anymore, so I could only reluctantly nod, meaning to tell the other person. I'm not afraid of any consequences. The female corpse reached out to hold my arm and lifted me up, exposing my head from the water. Tell me personally, she said after I came out of the water, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. Before I could even speak, I heard Han Zong shouting from above, don't promise her. I heard Han Zong stopping me, but with a trembling voice, I said to the female corpse, I acknowledge any consequences. Okay. The female corpse raised her hand, and the rope hanging from me rushed straight out of the water and stood upright in the well. The female corpse said, the one above, connect the rope and pull us out. Han Zong sighed helplessly and connected the rope, pulling me and the female corpse towards the wellhead. The female corpse leaned in my ear and said, when I reach the wellhead in a while, I need to borrow your yang energy to use it. If you run out of yang energy, the old ghost on top can only drag out a corpse. If you can't hold on, or if you back out, you can let go, and I will fall back into the well. In the future, don't come to me again. If I see you again, I will definitely kill you. When I nodded, there was a sudden sound in my ear that sounded like a stone slab exploding. By the time I turned my head to look aside, ice crystals had already flown down the well wall like snow. Is the ice on the well bore broken? I turned my head again and saw several runes written in cinnabar around the well bore. The female corpse whispered, If my body comes out, the rune will block me. Now, it's time for me to borrow your yang energy. If I can't hold it, let go. Before I could even speak, the lips of the female corpse pressed against my mouth. I felt as if the only bit of heat left in my body had been sucked out of her body, and she had almost lost consciousness from the cold. I desperately interlocked my ten fingers tightly together, afraid that I wouldn't be able to hold on and drop the female corpse into the water. If I could still talk, I would definitely tell her. Hold on to me. That female corpse, I don't know if she wants to go out of the well or not, there's no intention of holding me at all. 
I just feel like the female corpse in my arms is getting heavier and heavier as I hold her, her body sliding down from my arms like a fish, and she struggles to wrap her feet around each other's waist. I finally stabilize the female corpse, but I heard her say in my ear, what's going on? If you take me out, maybe I'll die even worse. Han Zong also shouted from above, Xiao Jiu, let go. There must be a great cause and effect on her. If you save her, she may be doomed. I said with all my might, I want revenge, and then I heard an explosion coming from the edge of the well. The eight blue stones that built the edge of the well burst at the same time, and large and small stones fell from the air as if to fill the well. A fist-sized stone hit me right on the head, and blood rushed down my forehead. No matter what I looked at, it turned blood red, and my hands and feet couldn't exert any strength. I don't know where the strength came from, so I shouted at the top of my throat, Grandpa, pull me out. I'll accept whether it's dead or alive. Ah. Han Zong let out a long sigh and suddenly pulled the rope, facing the falling rocks and pulling me and the female corpse towards the wellhead. I don't know how many stones hit me before Han Zong pulled me out of the wellhead. I looked up and smiled at Han Zong, then fainted while holding on to the female corpse. Chapter 9, Please Reconsider You are listening at NovelFull.audio When I woke up, the first thing I saw was Han Zong with his back to me. Just as I was about to get up, I felt like my hands and feet were being pressed on the ground. When I turned around to look, my scalp was immediately numb with fear. I don't know where my body has gone from my neck down, only a flat and neat piece of clothing is left, connected under my neck. I looked on both sides again, and all I saw was the cuffs that had been nailed in. My clothes. As soon as I realized, I heard a woman say, what use are you using his clothes to protect his soul? If you can save him for a while, can you still save him for a lifetime? Even if you save him, you can't exchange his human skin. With fox skin around him, he is destined to entangle with evil and never have peace. How many times can you save him? If you ask me, why don't you just let go and let him die a little more happily? Try to preserve his soul as much as possible and let him reincarnate, that's the right path. Han Zongdao said, being able to save for a while is for a while. You have received his favor, and he has also taken your cause and effect. You won't stand idly by, will you? The woman smiled and said, it was because I received his favor that I told you to let go. Let's not say for now, can you surpass that fox? Even if you can escape this calamity, what can you do? Instead of letting him struggle between life and death for a lifetime, it's better to let him reincarnate and start over again. Are you right? Han Zong couldn't speak for a while, and after a while, he said, you're right. Han Zong slightly opened his body and looked at the corpse lying on his back in the snow, wrapped around his limbs. Isn't that me? When I came up from the well, I was already frozen stiff. The female corpse in my arms had already stood in the distance, but I still maintained the posture of tightly entwining the female corpse. My soul, however, somehow ran into my own clothes. Han Zong looked at me for a while before covering my mouth and nose with his hand. Is he trying to suffocate me? I wanted to shout Han Zong to stop, but I couldn't make a sound from my mouth. I could only watch Han Zong tightly cover my face. Han Zong's fingers tightened as he suddenly stopped his hand and said, Look at this child. He's holding on to you until he's about to freeze to death. He's not just trying to save his own life, but also seeking revenge for his grandfather. I can't just send him away like this. Otherwise, he won't die in peace. Han Zong stood up and said, is it life or death? Let this child choose for himself. The female corpse suddenly turned around and said, How do you choose? At the moment I saw the other person's face, I was able to speak. I said, No matter what happens, I will accept it. As long as I can avenge my lord. The female corpse remained silent for a moment before shaking her head and saying, Why are some people always so persistent? You are ready you can come to me. 
As for the price you will pay after I help you, let's wait until you can survive. I have to remind you. The cost of making me take action may exceed your imagination. If you can't do it, it's hard to die. You still have time to go back on your word now. I looked at the other person and said, I agree. Han Zong didn't stop me, he was just looking up and sighing. The female corpse said, fate, and disappeared into the darkness. Han Zong grabbed a handful of soil from the collapsed well and stuffed it into my pocket. He wrapped my soul in my clothes and carried my body back home. I lit an oil lamp above my head and said, Xiao Jiu, wow. You're so rested. After tonight, your soul will go back. Hello, rest well. Leave the rest to me. I did indeed regain my soul that night, but I had a high fever and couldn't get up, so I lay in bed for three days. It was not until the evening of the the fourth day that Han Zong helped him up. Han Zong took me to the kitchen and took out the handful of soil he had brought back from the well. He scattered it around the water tank and said to me, Call out that woman to the water tank. I have heard people say before that one cannot go to a well that has drowned people. It is not only for fear of ghosts coming out of the well to drag people, but also for fear of bringing the mud from the well back home. Bring the mud by the well home, and then bring the water ghost home. The place where water can be stored in the house will become similar to a well. If you stretch your head in and look inside, you might have to be pulled into the water by the hand that comes out from inside, grabbing your hair. I walked up to the edge of the water tank and knocked three times, shouting, Zimu. There was a sound of water rolling in the tank, and muddy water gushed out from the mouth of the tank like mud. After a moment, the water tank, which was over a meter high, seemed unable to withstand the impact of the water flow. Suddenly, several cracks opened, and yellowed well water gushed out from the cracks. I suddenly felt like there were several more people in the room. I instinctively took a half step back, and the kitchen doors and windows followed suit without any wind. They opened and closed, knocking the window frames and door frames with a loud bang. I just turned my head slightly and saw the lid of the pot sliding down from the stove. A human hand was extending from inside the pot, pressing its white fingertips against the edge and exerting force, as if trying to climb out of the pot. Immediately after, the basin, kettle. All the places that could hold water were filled with muddy water with a fishy smell, and the temperature in the room suddenly dropped to freezing point. Even standing indoors made people shiver with cold. At this moment, Zemo poked his head out of the water tank and said calmly, All right. Don't scare him. The strange noise in the room suddenly stopped, and Zemo followed suit, saying, I have brought you eight water ghosts. With them guarding you, you can probably block the fox's fox son and grandson. At this point, Han Zong also revealed his plan. I told you before that fox was staring at you and trying to get its skin back. I have pondered several times about the craftsman's secret. Your master had a time limit when he changed your skin. The fox skin on your body should one day grow completely together with you. Once your skin grows, even if the fox peels off your skin, it cannot be changed back. So, we can use this to force her out. Han Zongdao said, In my lineage, there is a way for your skin to quickly grow and close. Back then, your grandfather and I didn't use this secret method for you. Firstly, he couldn't find the materials. Secondly, this secret method leans towards the evil path, and after using it, there will be endless troubles. Thirdly, Han Zong's voice paused and said, The third and most important point is to really let fox skin grow on you. No one knows what consequences it will cause. I beg Miss Zimu to find a secret medicine that can make your skin grow and heal. If you have figured it out, tonight we will go to the water to lure the fox. Think carefully again. Chapter 10 Tomorrow I wait for you. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. I shook my head and said, I don't have much to consider anymore. At that time, although I was not very old and didn't know so much about the world of martial arts, I had a stubborn spirit on my body. When I looked at Zimu who was floating on the water, 
I unexpectedly said, I don't want to put hope in the afterlife. Zimu looked at my face and was stunned. It was as if he was looking at an old friend whom he had not seen in many years. After a while, Zimu sank into the water without saying a word and disappeared. Han Zong stared at the rippling water in the tank and let out a long sigh, it's okay, she kept her promise. Let's go. Han Zong's plan was for me to row a boat into the center of the mountaintop reservoir, where I would take the secret medicine obtained from Shermu and completely blend fox fur. Once the stone fox senses that I am fusing fox fur, it will definitely take the risk of wading into the water to catch me. Zimu and the eight water ghosts she found were waiting for her in the water. If Zimu cannot stop the stone fox, there are still two heavy crossbows hidden in the boat prepared by Han Zong, which have been pressed against the wooden heart for a hundred years. I still have two chances to shoot the stone fox. If both of my arrows were missed, Han Zong, who was hiding in the dark, was still manipulating a heavy crossbow. If we can't win the stone fox three times, we'll have to wait until we die. Han Zong sent me to the ship, pushed me on the side, and the small boat drifted towards the center of the reservoir on its own. I was sitting in the boat with a heavy crossbow, but I didn't see Zimu delivering medicine for a long time, and my heart began to panic. Zimu hasn't appeared yet, is it because he broke his promise? If Zimu doesn't come over, my only reliance will be on the two pieces of wood resting on the crossbow bed. I have heard people say that foxes are afraid of becoming wood in the climate, and there is also a saying in the folk that, a hundred-year-old fox is a thousand-year-old fox. However, the premise is that I can hit the stone fox with a wooden arrow. It has already suffered a loss at home once, and if we want it to be deceived again, we can only force it to fall into a trap. Without the secret medicine, Shihu could have remained motionless and waited for me to come ashore again. At that time, both up and down the mountain had to become the stronghold of the stone fox, and I had no chance of escaping. I watched as time passed and my heart became increasingly uncertain. In the end, I couldn't help but walk out of the cabin. As soon as I stood on the planks of the boat, I saw a stone gate several meters high open in the water. I don't know if the gate is sunk or standing in the water, but I can clearly see the relief of the ghost face on the gate. Countless lifelike reliefs, like a group of evil spirits who want to break out of hell but are blocked between Yin and Yang by Shemen Xingsheng. Although it has been transformed into a relief, it is still desperately trying to break free from the constraints of the stone gate and rush towards the human world. I just had a face dot to dot face encounter with the ghost gate, and the underwater stone gate suddenly opened. A figure dressed in a white dress, cold and stunning, floated out of the door and quickly floated to the surface of the water. When I turned my head to look, I saw a corpse of a woman in a white dress floating on the side of the boat. The corpse lay quietly in the water with her feet facing the side of the ship, hands folded on her chest. Although her face was pale and bloodless, it could not conceal her beauty during her lifetime. Next, the second, third. Eighteen female corpses floated up to the surface one by one, forming a circle around the small boat. I instinctively swallowed my saliva, and the cat bent down and picked up the oar in its hand. When I looked at the female corpse in the water again, eighteen corpses opened their eyes neatly, and black air surged in their pitch-black pupils for an instant. The once stunning female corpse seemed to have been drained of flesh and blood in the moment when Black Chi left, and quickly withered away. After a moment, the eighteen female corpses turned into eighteen sheets of human skin lying flat in the water, with empty mouths and eyes, and scattered hair. In panic, I quickly crawled into the cabin and pushed the door. The black air that gushed out of the female corpse seeped in through the gaps in the door. At the same time, the voice of Zimu also came from under the boat. Don't be afraid, the ghost energy that I use human skin to carry out is the secret medicine that allows you to fuse with fox skin. Sit still and wait for you to fuse fox skin. I breathed a sigh of relief and sat in the cabin guarding the crossbow. Not long after, the swimming Yin Chi reached under me, gradually spreading upwards like accumulated water. I also felt a strange itch on my body, and at that time, 
I wished I could have a few more hands to scratch. Zimu, who was submerged in the water, seemed to be able to see my movements and shouted sternly, Don't scratch, grit your teeth and hold on. That's fox fur growing on you. If you scratch and leak it, you'll lose all your previous efforts. You have to hold on even in death. I forced myself to put my hands on my legs when I heard Shur Hu's sneer coming from outside the cabin. You dare to believe anyone's words. I'll tell you, those things on the water surface are all the beautiful skin of the Rakshasa ghost borrowed from the underworld by that woman. The so dot called ghost energy is just the essence of the Rakshasa ghost. You absorbed the ghost energy and fused it with fox blood. You don't even think about what it will become in the future. I couldn't help but let out a thud in my heart, and my body couldn't help but tremble. I know that foxes can deceive people, but I inexplicably feel that what they say makes sense. Sure who looked at me and said again, Chen Jiu, you and your grandfather both hate the wrong person and believe the wrong person. I swore back then that if I didn't retaliate against the Chin family, would I skin you. Besides, I can't go to the underworld either. How could I skin you before you were born? Where did the skin you were skinned in the underworld go? Have you ever thought about these? When Sher Hu asked me this question, my heart was filled with doubts, and the more I thought about it, the more I felt that every word Sher Hu said was reasonable. Unexpectedly, Sher Hu suddenly said another sentence. I can't do the skinning of the underworld, but someone can do it. Han Zong. I almost shouted out, and my heart sank with it. That's right. Sher Hu chuckled softly, the old ghost that your family has been offering is not an ordinary person. The female ghost you invited is not an ordinary person either. Can you withstand two ghosts deceiving you together? My heart sank a bit, but my mind seemed to regain a hint of clarity. How do I know, you're not lying to me? Ha ha. Shur Hu smiled and said, my goal is to kill you and get my skin back. Believe it or not, I will kill you. I just don't want you to hate the wrong person in the underworld. I want my skin, and they also plan to take your skin. Both sides want your life, and you are bound to die. The difference lies in who you want to die in. Sure whose words made a buzzing sound in my mind, and a feeling of being deceived and exploited surged out of my heart. In theory, I shouldn't doubt Han Zong, but the greatest skill of a fox is its charm. Even if an emperor with national fortune encounters a demon fox, he will inevitably be deceived. When Sher Hu spoke to me, he was using a magic spell to directly attack my mind. It was trying to use me to disrupt Han Zong's layout and force him out, and I didn't even have room to struggle. 